a very good evening to all our viewers on behalf of the bombay orthopedic society i welcome you all to wirock 2019 we are back with yet another edition of wirock yk speedia videos these webinars are short case presentations and each case presentation has a message and we also try to give you a summary of the review of literature in these cases today we have with us dr satish mutha and he is going to be speaking about a case of segmental tibia fracture and sometimes how this can be a difficult situation and the way it needs to be tackled so i now hand over the proceedings to dr mutha thank you sir hello friends this is satish mutha and i welcome you uh, to wirock 2019 which i promise is going to be a great learning feast for all of you as usual and maybe even better this time uh i will now be presenting a small but interesting case of a segmental fracture of the tibia this is a 40 year old male a case of a road traffic accident with ipsilateral fracture of the shaft femur and segmental fracture of the tibia all the fractures are closed injuries and there is no neurovascular insult to the limb after having stabilized the patient for the first 2 3 days having built up his hemoglobin and other parameters and optimizing we took him up for fixing both the fractures at the same sitting we the patient was in supine position under epidural anesthesia uh, i generally prefer nailing such distal femur fractures but this was a really long segment butterfly piece in the femur and uh, most of the conventional nails that are available for the distal femur that is the retrograde femur nails would have only two locking bolts in the distal femur which i thought could not impart enough stability in this case there are those some indian nails which have multi lock options in the distal femur but i am not familiar with them so i decided to plate the femur after having done open plate to the femur i addressed the tibia i used a indian copy of the expert tibia nail a close nailing was done across both the fractures and three locking bolts on either sides were used subsequently a uh, knee mobilization was started patient was kept non weight bearing for 6 weeks and then allowed toe touch for a further period of 6 weeks this is the fixation of the femur since this is not part of my discussion today i will not dwell much into this now this is what these are the x rays that uh, we had when the patient followed us for at the end of 3 months i'm sorry i don't have immediate post op x rays but they weren't much different from these ones here you can see the distal tibial fracture which probably is making an attempt to unite but is in definite valgus and you can see the upper tibia fracture where there is a gap and no possible sign of union although the alignment is good so at the end of 3 months at the end of 3 months oh sorry 4 months the problems here are a proximal tibia delayed union with gap a distal tibia which probably is heading towards non union and valgus at distal fracture site which is quite obvious now looking back at my primary surgery what were the mistakes that i made a probably i did not address the distraction at the proximal fracture site now this is one problem which is very common with segmental fractures and has been mentioned in many a study also the conventional technique of back slapping that we use while we close nail the tibias to achieve compression at the fracture site may not work here because after having locked distally if you back slap 
most of the energy is lost at the distal fracture site and if it is comminuted it might actually deform there instead of the forces being transmitted to the proximal fracture site so you have to use more the different methods for achieving compression of the proximal fracture site like uh, manual thumping or using a temporary compression plate so on and so forth also i did not fix the fibula thinking that a etn with three holes on either side would impart sufficient stability however because the fibula was not fixed i could not control the reduction of the distal tibia well and unfortunately the distal tibia landed up in valgus and as you can see the nail is not the best fit nail it is an undersized nail which probably is also adding to the deformity at the uh, the poor control of the deformity at the fracture site so now at the 3 months what were the options did i that were available to me first was to wait and watch because in segmental fractures union can be very slow so i thought that i would wait and watch since patient was comfortable the implant was holding well and maybe there would be some union 4 to 6 weeks later i would accept the union the way it is and then address the valgus at the distal fracture site maybe with a corrective osteotomy at some other day second option was to remove all the hardware do a proper exchange nailing with correction of the deformity which might be a lengthy surgery and the third which was something like a middle path is that i would take out the locking bolts withdraw the nail out of the distal fragment correct the deformity either externally or by soft tissue release and reinsert the same nail in a more acceptable position if required by using polar screws or whatever so i embarked on this surgery i decided to go ahead and refix the whole thing so i removed the whole bolts i removed the whole nail i removed the nail i tried to correct the deformity by external manipulation at the distal fracture site which i could not so i did a fibular osteotomy thinking that after an osteotomy i would be able to correct the deformity however the deformity would still not budge even after that so i had to open the distal fracture site i did an extensive osteoclasis and was able to correct the deformity i then opened the proximal fracture site i freshened the edges with the hope that i would graft it i ringed the canal one size higher however unfortunately while inserting the nail uh this is the first time that i had a problem like this i fractured the entry point which is quite an unusual uh, problem but is well documented once this happens one does not have enough purchase in the proximal fragment which anyway was a small one in my case so i thought that i would so i decided to abandon the nailing luckily i had kept plates ready so i used plates for the distal and the proximal fracture site i used a intramedullary fibular graft for the proximal fracture site to bridge the gap nonion and to impart in inherent stability also these are x-rays at the end of 3 months post surgery at the proximal fracture site we can see attempt of callus formation of the fracture at the distal fracture site also although there is not much convincing callus but seems to be holding well patient is toe touch weight, weight bearing and comfortable i gave patient 3 months of periparatide injection which is off the record and unproven but we do use uh, off and on and i hope the patient from will from now onwards progress to union I then look back at literature about segmental fractures. There are not many uh, detailed articles. These are the few ones that I could come across. One is an analysis of complications of segmental tibia fractures. Another was a very interesting retrospective analysis of 49 cases. Here, apart from various complications like compartment syndrome and other things, 
the author mentions that the intervening cylindrical portion of bone which is devoid of blood supply from either sides and also with extensive soft tissue damage is extremely prone to non union there is another study the management of segmental tibia shaft fractures by mcmohan and others which says that in these kind of situations nailing of course is a desirable option but one should have a very low threshold for adding another modalities of fixation so this is what i could summarize from the literature segmental fractures of the tibia are extremely prone to delayed unions various studies put it at 24 to 30% and non unions which is 5 to 10% which is far high from conventional close intramedullary nailings in non segmental fractures average time to healing is 34 weeks which is again very high and it really tests our patience because radiological assessment of healing is also a challenge you may not see the conventional callus formation that you expect to see at the end of 2 to 2 and a half months and you have to decide whether to go in or wait of course intramedullary nailing is a preferred method for such uh, fractures however very often a supplementary fixation in form of an derotation plate or even a ring fixator may be added because this fracture is going to take a long time to heal and you need an extremely sturdy fixation the distal fracture is classically more prone to non union such cases you should have a low threshold for bone grafting and wherever in doubt go ahead and bone graft achieving compression at the proximal fracture site is always a challenge using the conventional back slap method may not work and you may have to use various tricks like manual thumping or a temporary compression plate or other things there is a high incidence of malalignment at the distal fracture site particular so friends uh, a simple case like a segmental closed tibia fracture can really be a nightmare sometimes if you haven't properly planned and paid attention to slightest details like having a good cm imaging a good a good setup to be able to uh, look at the mechanical alignment and other things thank you so thank, thank you very much sir uh, for a very interesting case presentation and uh, on behalf of viroc 2019 and bombay orthopedic society i again welcome all the viewers uh, to watch this webinar and if you have any questions you can put this in the comment section and we'll be very very happy to forward them to our expert who will answer them uh, thank you dr mutha it was a wonderful case i thank you for uh, sparing time out from your busy schedule to present this case and uh, i hope uh, that the viewers will have many questions which we will forward them to you Thank you very much sir. Thank you so much.